Tonic takes. My name is Fabi. I'm here with my usual co host, Ivan. What's up, man? How you been up to? We have a lot of news to talk about, or one big, <laughs> one big news. I mean, but we're here for something. Ivan, how you been, man? Yeah, it's been pretty good. It's been an interesting period, you know, juggling work, writing, and following, keeping up with soccer and other sports news, as well as, you know, celebrating Valentine's Day with my long distance relationship girlfriend, mm. uh, Nicole, that's been pretty fun but it's been good and even when i've not been you know recording with you guys in the podcast i have been listening and keeping up and it's been an exciting period for us and yeah it's been a good window yeah, for definitely. a transfer window for the quakes yeah and again a lot to talk about today um we kind of mm. knew about this transfer a little on the early side um right a rumor or like a rumor mill season that's actually coming yeah. to fruition. So even, right. even if we're not like landing everybody, um, we missed on one big star, but we still are getting rumors and we're still getting not that b- oddball of rumors. So today, the big news that we're here to talk about is Eric uh, remedy to the San Jose earthquakes traded for 200 gam and 300 gam possible in incentives so again this is a trade this is jesse fiorinelli's second mls trade um we haven't seen this since oduro was traded for quincy ameriqua or vice versa quincy ameriqua was traded for oduro and um this is something that jesse fiorinelli doesn't really do ivan what do you feel about this transfer or this trade do you feel like this is a good value and do you feel like what's going to happen to this roster I think that it is a positive sign because you and I have talked about this in several podcasts where like every other MLS club makes a considerable amount of uh, business in general, but also like they interact with each other, they make trades and stuff like that. So, but San Jose Earthquakes have largely relied on players outside of North America or outside of MLS Mm -hmm. to uh, bolster their roster. And when you do that, you run the risk of these players don't need t- time. The players do need time to mm. develop and adjust to this different style of play. Every yeah. country, every league has a different style of play. And, you know, there's some transitions that take less time to make. Like if you transfer from South America to the Liga Mekis, I think, Sometimes that can be an easier adjustment period than it from South America to MLS because of uh, cultural differences and stuff like that. But this is actually a weird case. This player played, Eric Remedy, played for Almeida in ben- at Banfield in 2015. And I saw some tweets from some Argentinian Banfield fans saying that he was a top three, at least player at the CDM role in Argentina. So it's a very possible, yeah, it's very possible that we have a great, great player on our hands for a very cheap price. Um, Something wasn't happening in Atlanta where he just wasn't cutting it. So they went and they got Sosa, um, which is a phenomenal player. Again, he's probably a player that's going to use MLS as a springboard to go into a European club. But because of uh, other teams really getting good top talent prospects, we landed Eric Remedy and um, we I'm truly appreciative of, of this transfer I think only 200 gam for right now is insane but um, this is a little too much to pay for a backup what do you think Ivan yeah I think Remedy is the type of player that they're gonna be looking to start him based on the links that they went to obtain him yeah and he does have some potential in him, even if he hasn't been the most exciting or talented South American to come through Atlanta United in the last few years. And it is high praise from Argentine fans to say that about 
uh, a player who is is a central defensive midfielder, yeah. and he in Buenos Aires is the London of Argentina in terms of soccer. They have so many <laughs> different clubs there, like yep. Argentinos Juniors, Boca Juniors, Huracan, San Lorenzo, mm. uh, River Plate, and so on and so forth. So it is hard to stand out if you're not in one of those big two clubs. So right. that is good news. And Remedy is a cult hero at Atlanta United for a reason. Yeah. And I'm sure my friends uh, Drew and Josh at MLS Multiplex would back me up on this, that yeah. he's well known for that one goal, his first ever senior goal that came at the playoffs for Atlanta United, uh, his role in winning Atlanta United, the U.S. Open Cup. But he didn't quite live up to uh, his potential or how much that, mm. you know, he was expected to kick on from there. But here's a good chance for a new opportunity for him where there might be less pressure than Atlanta United. They didn't have a great 2020 season. Mm. The wheels started to come off there, and they do have to figure out other situations. Like we've talked about San Jose Earthquakes uh, striker questions. They have plenty of striker questions because Joseph yeah. Martinez was hurt, and they haven't been able to adequately replace him. Sorry, Adam John, we love you, but you haven't been the adequate replacement that they've been looking for. But um, I think – the biggest question mark with Eric Remedy is, you know, with only the one goal in a league or playoff game in his career, which is equal to Yudsen's one right. goal. Yeah. Do you play Yudsen and uh, Remedy together and have like a stone wall in front of the back four? And you have to really hope that your front four, the wingers, central tech and midfielder and the striker are very productive to make up for it. Right. Or do you maybe you play one or the other and that will help with the squad rotation as we envision that, you know, we're starting the league in April. So yeah. maybe it won't be quite as intense of a schedule as it was in 2020, particularly after MLS is back. D depends. That depends. You can. Yeah. Right. It all depends. We don't know anything for sure. Because we have the U.S. But, Cup this year. We have uh, Olympic qualifying that Jackson and JT and. And Eric, actually, a lot of these guys might go play for the U23s in Tokyo. So this squad might be really depleted. But we have an Argentinian guy that's not really sniffing the national team, that's played for Almeida mm -hmm. before, and that understands the system where he can hit the ground running. I think we have a stellar option to come off the bench. And if he doesn't come off the bench, um, I, I flirted around an idea on our Twitter the other day where – it was Jackson playing that 10 role and then Chofi's on the left side. So a lot of people didn't like that idea, but if we want to get our best players on the field all at once, that's something that we might have to keep in mind. Um, and then Fierro coming off the bench or some, some, some ordeal like that. But again, this player looks almost like a carbon copy of Yudsen. So I think this is a pretty, pretty big thing for Almeida to at least know if Yusin cannot play and not have, um, you know, uh, fit legs or has yellow card accumulation that he'll have another option in remedy to put plug and play. I mean, run the same system. We're not going to get those seven, one losses this year because we're going to have that backup and somebody that's already similar to the system or familiar with the system. I apologize. And to me, the best teams in MLS understand that while it's nice to have a lot of options in like the flashier positions, like ha having five or six wingers maybe, or having three or four strikers, it's also just as important to have a couple different defensive midfielders and uh, defensive options in general. You look at the Seattle Sounders, maybe last season, they were a little lighter on um, – Strikers like Will Bruin was like their best backup option, but they had a couple of players like in midfield and defense that they were able to like move around. And like, I remember thinking like on the bench, if some, if they had like a yellow card suspension for like Ariaga, which is always a possibility with that hot head, yeah. uh, they had MLS cup winners like Brad Smith and Roman right. Torres who weren't playing much, but they've been there. They've done that. Right. And like Columbus crew who did win the MLS cup, they had to, worst case scenario happened to them with no Pedro Santos or Darlington Nagby in the final Darlington Nagby in particular would be the more apt comparison for a central midfielder like Eric remedy. Yeah. And they were able to figure that out too. So th these are all positions that you have to consider. And I think you 
need all the help you can get in playing soccer in, in the pandemic as, you know, this is going to be the second season where MLS clubs are going to be doing this. And as, you know, clubs around the world are figuring this out in right. their second seasons doing this, it's going to be vital to figure it out. And let's not forget, Eric's only 25 years old. So he's right. definitely a young player and a talented player that can come in, maybe have a good couple of years, take over if Jackson eventually leaves or possibly leave on his own. So uh, Nick, I think Nick Lima's 26, right? So it's, he's even right. younger than Nick Lima. So that's that's another crazy thing that Quakes fans need to wrap their heads around. Nick Lima wasn't that young. So <laughs> Uh, but <laughs> it's just nice knowing that only a portion of that Nick Lima money went to Eric Re uh, Rem uh, Remedy. Excuse me. So that might mean that there possibly is another trade in the works for MLS talent. Because if we don't use that gam, it's going to go away. So either they're going to buy down a contract that they sign a close DP contract or they get another MLS talent. And just looking at this right. for Ivan, we do have two really big glaring holes. And that's right back because we got rid of Nick Lima and then also striker. Wando is going to be up top a lot of the time, but I don't expect him to be up there for 40 plus games, especially with U.S. Open Cup coming back this year and just the rigorous schedule and a Matias Almeida system. We are definitely going to need to bolster the, the, the striker position, but Matias Almeida might be just ready to put Andy Rios up there with along with Wando. So we'll see what, what pans out. Ivan, do you have any thoughts on the roster? Yeah, so I'm taking a look at the roster right now. And uh, I think that it's one where if you just take a quick look at it, you're wondering, I don't see where the improvements are, even with the presence of new names such as Remedy and Chofis. But I think that... This is a player that can compete. I don't think yeah. they're necessarily making lateral moves, which I feared they might. I think that they are trying to make some adjustments mm. and addressing some of the criticisms that they had. And, you know, we asked particularly for younger replacements for, like, the striker position because, you know, Wondolowski, unfortunately, won't play forever. Yeah. Um, even though Chofis is only in on loan from Chivas, he is 26, and who knows? Maybe right. he, he plays well for the Quakes. The Quakes can negotiate some sort of permanent option. Yeah, that's always a possibility. Um, and so this is the year that we're dealing with COVID transfers, Ivan, the A's have yeah. only actually spent 8.5 million dollars in Major League Baseball. That is insane. Yeah. So. We well, it is the A's. Yeah, but still, it's, it's, it's <laughs> yeah. very grateful that we're even getting transfers, guys. I know, I know this is tough, but the Oakland A's, in one of the top, you know, four major leagues, has only spent eight point five million dollars in. I think it was three players, so it could be it, it could be a lot worse. But at least we were we were linked with Matias Sukar in the beginning of this silly season. So striker, right. and then we were also linked to Miguel Layun, which is a right back. Which I, I personally think that they might not be done there. It might be kind of like a negotiation tactic. Or I saw some rumors that we might have already signed him, and he's coming for free in the summer. So there's a lot of things that can plan uh, can play out. But again. It's a great time to be a Quakes fan. We're excited. Um, it can be worse, guys. It could be worse. So I know we're not going to get that splash of cash, but the A's, again, have only spent $8.5 million in Major League Baseball. Ivan, I'm sorry I cut you off. Go ahead. Right. So this isn't the year where you can expect a FIFA-style uh, transfer window where you're going to buy five or six players and really overhaul the roster. But – we addressed the forward position, we got stronger there. We addressed the midfield positions, particularly central midfielder. We got stronger there. Defense is my biggest question mark right now. Mm. Um, some of the defenders we still have, we got Alanis for another year on loan. Mm -hmm. We have Tanner Beeson, how he, is he going to be season two? That's going to be a big indicator of what kind of future he'll have with us at San Jose Earthquakes this yeah. year. 
Uh, Tommy Thompson can slide in as a fullback. He probably will now because we haven't replaced Nick Lima, really. Right. Um, Flo Youngworth. Uh, I was a little surprised when we tweeted out um, <laughs> something about Florian Youngworth uh, that someone said that he was one of the worst defenders. And I'm like, come on. Like, we've had much worse than Flo right. at right. this club. Like you said, Ty uh, Harden. And I was like, oh, man, I forgot about <laughs> Ty Harden. But, yeah, right. no, Flo – Flo has done a great job as a quake and he's a converted center back. So again, there's been way worse defenders. Flo might've been on a decline last year, but that's okay. He probably was going to have a bounce back season because Ellen is going to be out there more and we're going to have a solid defense more of less the defense from two years ago instead of last year. And a big theme this season will probably have to be investing in youth players because there's no more Reno that you could just like, oh, well, if we're not going to play him, we're just going to ship him up Highway 80 and he's going to play at Reno. Reno, unfortunately, isn't a thing anymore. So, yep. you, Monterey, the Jacob, yeah, go ahead. In Monterey, sorry, in Monterey is not even around yet. So, that's a next year type of thing. So, yeah, there. we have to play the, we have to play the young guys. Did they announce if uh, Monterey was is going to be the next affiliate for the Quakes? Uh, no, but that that seemed like the natural progression. Right. Uh, if, Rather than if, Oakland if roots. Oakland, yeah, if Oakland isn't going to do it, Monterey possibly has some ties to uh, the Earthquakes because they, they hired Frank Gallup as their coach. So it, it seems mm -hmm. a little too much of a coincidence to not be connected. All right. Yep. And yeah, so this is going to be a big year for Jacob Acuna Rije, Gilbert Fuentes. Yeah. Maybe Emi Ochoa will play some U.S. Open Cup games. Yeah. Uh, and we a player that we haven't seen a, too lot of, but stands out for his number 77, Casey Walls. I'm interested mm. in what he'll do. And of course, we get the, our first round pick from the Super Draft, uh, yeah. Williamson. Maybe he'll be a factor as well. Definitely. He'll, so he'll, he'll probably get some minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I do hope that this uh, combination of players we have in our roster right now yeah. is enough to make that next step for the San Jose Earthquakes. And mm -hmm. the goal this season, that next step has to be make the playoffs. First of all, like yeah. you want to get consistency, making the playoffs two years in a row does a world of good for the organization. Um, but also winning a playoff game once you get there. Because right. the San Jose Earthquakes have not won a playoff game since 2010 when they beat the New York Red Bulls. Mm. So In the Eastern that Eastern. is a long time. <laughs> right. That was such a weird season. Um, but yeah, but yeah I, that does mean something. Just as how much it meant for the Cleveland Browns that finally made the playoffs, right. it was a huge weight off their shoulder to also beat the Steelers in the playoffs as yeah. well. It's like so, being a big brother. I mean – after all those years of getting beat down by your older brother, now you finally give it back to him. <laughs> so. Right. So I think that the moves that have been made, including Eric Remedy here, they are headed in the right direction, yeah. but it just remains to be seen. Uh, we still have a little uh, uh, over like a month and a half, or maybe exactly a month and a half or so before the MLS season starts. Yeah, and a long time. As it is with Major League Soccer, with all the drafts and the trades and all that, and free agents being picked up, that an MLS roster can change a lot for many teams from one season to the next. So teams that did very well one season, they're not guaranteed to do well next season. And teams right. that struggled last season couldn't make a big surge next season. So it's hard to place more expectations beyond trying to build off last year. Yeah, and I think... I think we're heading in the right direction. I think the upgrade from Rocco to trophies is, is going to be big. Uh, I think having being able to communicate with your coach and playing with your coach before, I think it's going to be huge. Um, it's going to show that we don't need that preseason to get ready. We don't need that, oh, he's going to come in halfway through the season. Okay, we'll give him this as a pass, and then he'll get a full preseason to get ready with us. Um, I, we're not going to have that. These are guys that have already played with Almeida. And on one, it's a double-edged sword. I mean – they don't need any time to get accustomed to this system, but they also are guys that he likes. So this is going to be a fun season to watch. And I think we're going to, I think we're going to be okay. I think the 
right back hole is the biggest hole on the roster. And right. if Tommy Thompson can do a good job by plugging it a bit, I mean, we're going to have goals leak in from that side no matter what, just because it's the people are going to attack that side. Then so be it. But again, this is a roster that looks on all fronts better than last year's for sure. Yeah, it would have been great if, like, San Jose Earthquakes could find a way to get someone like, I don't know, Timothy Fosu Mensa. <laughs> but uh, for now, like, we're going to have to manage with what we have, and maybe they'll figure out a way to get into the right back if needed in the summer or something. Yeah, and I don't know if uh, Alfonso Davies is, is it, wants to come back home yet. I mean, <laughs> but he's a left back anyway. Oh, okay, okay. But that wraps it up for us, guys. This is a quick little video. We wanted to give you an update on Eric Remedy. We want to give a big shout out to all of our Patreoners. Again, all that money goes back into making content for you guys. We are growing. We have some more announcements that come out uh, come out pretty soon. Um, so if you want to be support. Uh, want to be supportive of our media please go to our patreon and sign up for one of our packages and we want to thank the big uh the beautiful game network as well as uh, uh icarus fc and roughneck scarves sorry a little bit of a brain fart there um but <laughs> thanks for watching and uh go quakes yeah go quakes take care